Hi, hello, and welcome. I am definitely not peaceful, and you're watching me plug my way to 2.8k rating on an Enhancement Shaman in Dragonflight Season 2. My guy, you need to get some kind of flea treatment, for real. That's kind of ridiculous. It's this spot, look at that. It's this spot in specific, like, is there a tag there on your new clothing that is bothering you? Before we get started with today's video, I'd like to point out that there is a link to a poll in the top of the description. On the poll, you can choose which healer I should play at the start of Season 3. So check that out, let me know what you want me to play. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm saying peaceful instead of Vlad, well, that's because I'm going to be shouting out channel members that join. I'd also like to point out that Kriva and Vanderloo joined. I hadn't decided to do these little shout outs yet until they had joined already, so I apologize for missing you guys, but Peaceful, you got your shout out. Whoever else becomes a member will also get a shout out. It is the absolute least I could do other than the perk of the actual membership to make sure you guys are appreciated and that I show it. And what I should probably get started with is the Uldamon. I really need to get that Uldamon done. I feel like once I get the Uldamon done, everything else will be easy, which I will probably be wrong about, but let's find out. Actually, what am I even planning? I'm going to join whatever they let me join. So let's find a group. We're going to filter 20 to 21, and we're just going to try and join any of these dungeons that we don't have a time 20 on. So this 21 Neltharian's Lair actually went pretty well up until the last boss. On the last boss, the tank died to a tank buster, then our warrior died to magma wave. After that, the tank was sort of mispositioning and the crystals were too far from the boss and the tank did nothing about it. With one DPS down, we didn't have enough DPS to kill the ad. And the second crystal was mispositioned and put too far away from the ad, which didn't let us stun the ad a second time without having to move it. When it was moving for the second time, it actually killed the healer. We did try to keep going because we knew that if we had to reset, we wouldn't time the key. We ended up wiping and we had to redo it. We waited for the elemental of shame to show up so we could reset our Seda debuff. And then with bloodlust, we were able to kill it, earning us an untimed 21 Neltharian's Lair that gave us 17 rating. Alright, getting started with a Brackenhide 20 with the group you see on the screen. Hoping for the best. I'm hoping that the uh, this Blood DK is as good as at Sanguine as the other Blood DK was. We're going for a massive pull here. We're going to put a focus on that Mystic. Actually, I put a focus on this guy. There's another War Scourge over there. We're going to put a Stone Skin Totem down, Wind Fury Totem down. We're going to use the group heal. We're going to drop Doggos, Doom Winds. Sundering, Crash Lightning, Chain Lightning combos coming out constantly. We need to do as much damage as possible for this, obviously. We're going to drop a Slow Totem down. Looking at this Rage Storming guy, War Scourge, he's going to Fear next, so I need to interrupt that. I do have the Fear uh, Preventing Totem, or rather Fear Removing Totem. War Scourge is choosing not to cast, maybe he's already been interrupted. Okay, the DK is right on top of it, that's good. Gonna drop another Stone Skin Totem. Good kiting by the DK. I like to see that. This is a beautiful pull. Holy crap. If the rest of this dungeon goes like this, we're gonna be freaking fine. I'm gonna knock these guys back. That got kicked. Very good. The knockback was used because there was a Sanguine pull there and they were all kind of slowed. Drop a, one of these Totems. Vicious Claw Mangle coming through. We're gonna drop a Stun Totem. I haven't been using that. Probably should have used it sooner just to get some CC through. I'm gonna try and finish off this War Scourge. Getting knocked up. Somebody activated a trap. There's Sanguine coming through. We have no knockback available. Uh, that Earth Totem probably wasn't helping anyone, but we'll see how it ends up being. We have quite a bit of Sanguine healing, but not as much as you'd think for a pull this size. It's pretty freaking good. Didn't want to use Bloodlust there because this is tyrannical after all. Let's just kick this. No reason to let that Earth Bolt go through. There we go. That was beautiful. We actually all stayed alive. That's amazing. That was a hell of a pull, and we still stayed alive, so I am confident with this group. Tank was also constantly moving, which is really good for, uh, whatchamacallit, Sanguine. He's also overlapping kicks with me. we look at this K-Speaker. We're going to switch to the Totem as soon as possible, if it's far away. There it is. It's nearby, so we're just going to let it go. Uh, we're going to cleave it down like so. We're going to drop a Stun Totem on top of this, because we have a Claw Fighter. Just may as well try and interrupt that thing. If it starts casting its thing with the stuffy stuff. The case surge, we're going to kick that. I should probably switch to the totem and just funnel into the totem instead of cleaving it. Because nobody else is reaching it with their cleave. Withering Burst is coming through. Hopefully we can kill before that. Never mind. The Augmentation Evoker interrupted it. That's good. I have no idea how to read their name because I don't read Cyrillic. So I don't know. Playing on EU, you end up playing with a lot of people with Cyrillic names from the Russian-based servers. We're going to try and grab this to this cauldron. I'll run up. I'm just going to say so people can grab it if they want to. Waiting to see which way the tank wants to go. This way you're going to put focus on the War Scourge. Just going to let the tank do his thing. Going to drop a Wind Fury Totem. Going to drop a Stone Skin Totem. Crash Lightning. Chain Lightning combo is going through. We're going to interrupt everything with that. We're going to drop a Stun Totem on top of it. Uh, okay, the Stun Totem took care of that, so I wasted my heal. That's Or my kick, I should say. But other people have been taking care of kicks quite well. 
and drop a slow totem on top of him because of the Wish's Claw Mangle. Paladin is just kind of tanking the Wish's Claw Mangle because, you know, Paladin things. Keep Wind Strikes going. Looking to see if we need to knock back. It doesn't look like I do. I'm going to knock this guy back. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> he got knocked around. Oh, that was freaking funny as hell. Okay, we're going to slow this guy. Try and finish him off before he gets into Sanguine. There we go. That's perfect. This is beautiful. The group knows what to do. I feel like this is going to be a good key. But then again, I said that at the beginning of the last key as well, and we ended up with an untimed 21 Naltharian's Lair. But I think that was like just a few key mistakes rather than like a general gameplay. It happens. We seem to have all our cooldowns available. I'm not sure if the tank wants to do a double pull. He does. We're going to put a focus on that. We're going to kick this, keep the guy moving. Rot Chanting Totem's coming down. I want to take care of that thing immediately. I'm going to drop all my shit on it while still beating the crap out of the rest of the group. Very good. My cleave is bigger than it seems. We're going to drop a slow totem and a stun totem for the vicious claw mangles. There we go. That worked out. Part of me really wishes that the stun totem was pretty much instant. That would be amazing, but you, can, you can't always get what you want. Looking if there's sanguine healing going on, we're going to knock back this and everything else, unfortunately, but I wanted to get that one guy out of the sanguine. I have a kick coming up soon. We're going to focus on the mystic. I can focus kick it in the background there. That'll make it group it up. Group up like that. DK keeps beating me to my kicks. That's amazing. It's beautiful to see. Not sure how much I am uh, helping with these knockbacks. I hope I am. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just annoying the tank for no reason. Let's see if the tank grabs this war scourge or not for the next group. I don't think he is. He's stuck. He's stuck on the fishes. No, people are getting stuck in the fishes. Something's fishy about that. Okay, DK just went all the way around. He said, F it. I'm not dealing with the fish. Gonna be kicking these earth totem or earth bolts. I already kicked one, so I can't do it again. We don't really have much melee, so the wind fury totem isn't very high on my uh, priority list. Yes, I see the red paladin in there. However, red paladins use crusading strike most of the time. Crusading strikes don't actually... Oh, no. I can't slow that guy. Okay, well, we ended up pulling him. That's unfortunate. We're going to slow this guy, even though he's in Sanguine, because I don't want him to move out of range of everything. We're going to try and finish him off so he doesn't run off and pull something. There we go. Now we can just focus on the Rage Storm, dude. The War Scourge. That's what they're called. They're called War Scourges. I have this bad habit of not really checking how, how much Maelstrom I have. And then just randomly starting to cast Lightning Bolt instead of just beating the crap out of the enemy. That's that's what happens when I'm commentating and I play off of Reflex rather than actual info that I have on my weak auras. Okay, we should be finishing this off. Very good. Pop an off heal there. Somebody grabbed it. Very nice. And by it, I mean the cage. We're going to put a focus on Trick Totem. We want to kill Trick Totem first is what the tank says. Probably tank putting it down there. Uh, we have Bloodlust going right off the bat. I'm not going to worry about the Wind Fury Totem. I'm going to use my defensive here. That was probably a bad call, but if I do get focused, my defensive is still up. We're going to interrupt these lightning bolts. I care more about the lightning bolts than I do for the heal. The mark for death is not on me. I'm looking at people's health bars. I'm going to use the group heal here. Just to get everyone nice and full health. Somebody's dragging the whirlwind through all of that. Can't do much about it. Getting knocked up. I'll kick that earth bolt because the earth bolt's hurt. Now I have a global available for this. I should have used stone skin totem when the bleeds went through. I just dragged that through the tank. That's my bad. Okay, we have new doggos available. We're going to drop the doggos into more cleave here. Hextric totem coming through. We hard switch to the Hextric totem always. Charge is on me. I'm looking for the tank. Tank's already standing on top of me. He used uh, anti-magic shell to not get CC'd. Or did he? I, he didn't apparently. He was just standing on top of me with anti-magic shell. Okay, in first interrupt. focus interrupting that. I don't have a group heal to use here. I'm going to use my... Totem, I'm going to use this, or Earth Elemental is what I meant, not Totem. We're going to kick this. No, we're not, because it's on cooldown. Trick Totem, almost dead. I'm going to self-heal Stone Skin Totem. Okay, it's on me. I'm trying to drag it away from the melee so they can keep DPS. I'm going to kick that Earth Bolt. Very good. It's still on me. We're going to keep kiting it. Come on, lady. Beyblade, f*** off. Okay, Gash Tooth is next. We have Doomans available. We're going to try and do another drop, drop of cooldowns on this. I don't know what I'm taking so much damage from. Probably the frontal cleave of the other boss, dumbass. We need a cleanse on the tank. There we go. Tank's doing his job. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like this. Now it's easy. We just gash tooth up. My group heal is coming off cooldown soon. Stone skin totem's going down. I'm going to try and heal up the full as soon as he's done doing his little jumps. Okay. When you heal up the full, you stop taking damage from the thingy thing with the stuffy stuff. I got marked for death. I'm going to use a defensive. I'm going to use a self-heal when I get kind of low. Like now. There we go. 
Just making sure I make it easy for the healer, because this is a pretty heal intensive fight. Okay, we're trying to finish off Gashtooth here before he does another bullshit combination of spells. Dropping new doggos. Oh, okay, Rira's dead first, so Beyblade Lady went down, now we need to finish off Gashtooth, and that's the first boss. If you can get through the first boss with a pug, Brackenhide's looking pretty dang good, and this tank's been really good about Sanguine. We're gonna grab this, I have Alchemy. Tank recognizes that I have Alchemy, because he also didn't go back to grab the the spell on the first uh, big pole that was down here by the first cauldron that we did. Okay, there's a blood boil so we can DPS soon. As soon as he's done gathering, we're going to drop him a wind fury totem, keep him moving. Or no, a wind gust totem, okay. I think this is where we stop. We're looking at putting a focus on the wilted oak and, so we can keep DPSing it no matter what. All of them are grouped up, so we're dropping our sundering. We have doom winds up as well. We got to step away for that stomp. Stone skin totem's going down. I don't have I have a group heal available, but I do not believe I need it. Tank has been amazing about the interrupts. This is this makes it so much easier to play. I'm just gonna save my interrupts for cases of emergency, because the tank is just on top of it. So I'm gonna be lower on interrupts, but at least I know everything will be handled and I can trust that. Knock back coming through, we're gonna put a slow down. We want that tree dead. There we go. Tree is dead. Beautiful. These are casting. I'm gonna knock them all around. That's kind of unfortunate that I did it that way, but what can I do? I just didn't want them to stand in Sanguine. They're still all slowed. That's kind of unfortunate because they're dropping inside of that. Or they're casting and moving, like moving slowly while inside of Sanguine. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why that was so hard to say, but there we go. I would love to do more with this group, but that Paladin is doing so much more DPS than I am that it's kind of embarrassing and I don't think I'm allowed to. I'm going to put a focus on the Rot Slinger, but we're going to chant, like, directly target the Oak. I've got a lot of comments that I should just focus on killing these. Um, or rather, killing the Rotslinger. That's correct. I think we're going to do that. Focus interrupt on that burst of decay coming through. We're going to use a group heal here just to keep us all nice and healthy. I don't know if I should use my cleanse here or not. The totem is dead. I'll use my cleanse when I am... Uh, I'll use my cleanse. Shit. I'll use my cleanse because there's probably not going to be another totem if we can keep tunneling this guy. I had to move away because of the big old stomp. I'm going to try and dump all my damage into the Rot Slinger. There will be another Totem soon, but the Totem's going to have less health than the Rot Slinger. Not if that happens. Okay, still focusing on the Rot Slinger. Very good positioning by the tank. This is beautiful. We're going to ignore the Totem. Just got to finish the Rot Slinger, because when the Rot Slinger dies, the Totem goes away. So we unfortunately have the Oak standing in a bunch of Sanguine. It's hard to prevent that, honestly. We're going to knock back all of these guys and try to finish them off. We're going to drop a Slow Totem on them to keep them away from the Wilted Oak, so that the Wilted Oak doesn't heal as much. Good. That was a good knockback, I feel like. I should have probably done that sooner, keeping it, kept an eye out for it, but I was so focused on tunneling the Rot Slinger that I couldn't do that as well. Oh, Tank says, well played with Nox. Thank you for recognizing that. I'm gonna say, well played with Kiting. It's so nice to get that recognized. I'm gonna just activate this real quick and give at least myself another disease cleanse. There we go. Putting a focus on that guy, looking for the Rot Singer totem is there over... Okay, we're gonna kick that because I trust the tank to take care of the rest of it. I'm gonna stay near the totem. Yeah, we're just gonna switch to the totem. Just gonna finish off this totem. That will reduce how many stacks we get. Aldrin is up, so tank can kite into it if he needs to. I'm looking for the Rot Singer again. There he is. I used to call them Rot Slingers instead of Rot Singer because I just read it wrong. So now I know that they're Rot Singers and not Rot Slingers. But both make sense, right? They're slinging rot around. Totem is down, but we killed the rot singer faster than that. Okay, we're just gonna knock that back. We're gonna slow it. We've got it asphyxiated. It's very good. I knocked it back a bit too soon, I think, but that's okay. Tank is very good about kiting, so we shouldn't have much of an issue with that. I am still tunneling into this. We're gonna interrupt that. A little bit worried about the the Kade Elder. We're gonna drop a stun under the Kade Elder. Tank should move, just keep moving. Oh no, the stomp's coming through. Do not kill the Elder. Okay. He's almost dead. I should have hit him. Oh, no. If I was hitting him, he would have died and wouldn't have healed. But I'm, I'm focusing too much about how much they're going to heal. I should just kill them. They can't heal if they're dead. Okay, we're done with the Rot Slingers. With this side, if you go this side, I can see now why people go this side. If you go this side, what ends up happening is there's no, uh, whatchamacallit, there's no Rot Slingers. There's two of them. You can't pull three if there's only two, right? There's a reference to a previous uh, run that I had. I'm looking at those stomps. Well, I'm looking at those stomps, but I'm not moving out of them. Okay, I think we got all the kicks through. I don't see anyone dying, so we didn't didn't get hit by any of those. I was stunned, so I couldn't get my kick off. I'm going to drop a Wind Fury Totem here. 
I'm going to drop Doom Winds here because these guys are kind of a pain in the ass. They have so much HP, especially if they end up healing. I'm looking at the HP of the lower, like, smaller mobs. Because that way I can knock back the Monsters Decay. The Monsters Decay will do its burst thing, so we're just going to let it do its burst thing. We're going to kick this guy. Tank keeps beating me to the kicks. I can't do it. I can't kick it if the tank kicks it first. Dang. This tank's an absolute beast. Straight up. Just an absolute beast. Moving everything around. Oak is moving a bit. He didn't cast. That's all that matters. As long as he doesn't cast, it doesn't matter. The big thing is when he casts in Sanguine. There we go. He's dead. We have a bit of decaying slime and these lashers left. I think we're good. Paladin's at 55% mana. This boss is not very hard to, to heal. Okay. He says Bloodlust when ready. I'll do that. Okay, we have Wind Fury Totem going down. I'm going to use Doggos and I'm going to use Sundering because that way when I have Bloodlust up, I'll have another Sundering. I'm going to hold Sunder. I'm going to hold Doom Winds and Hell until I have Sundering and Bloodlust up. Because that's my big damage window, and I don't have a way to lower the Doom Winds cooldown, unfortunately. Trying to kill these guys. I'm going to kick this one. I ah, should have dropped a Stun Totem. Those explosions are going to hurt a little bit, but it's okay. Tank's probably going in. Yeah, Wind uh, Strikes available, so we can actually DPS while moving away from it. Bloodlust up in 25 seconds. I'm going to focus on my rotation right now. There's not much to focus mechanics-wise. I'm going to drop a Stun Totem on top of these. That should prevent them all from casting. Perfect. Uh, breath from the... Uh, Evoker took care of that as well. We have Bloodlust in 5 seconds. I'm holding it. And Bloodlust. There we go. We're going to Doom Winds into Sundering into Crash Lightning. We're going to drop Doggos in the middle of Doom Winds. Not exactly ideal. I should have used them first, but I keep messing up my big openers and stuff all the time, so I'm not too surprised about it. I still haven't gotten good at that. I'm Generally, I'm not very good about that. We have another set of Doggos coming through. Tank's not going in. Paladin is going in. I think they were pre-made, so this makes sense. They probably communicated that on voice chat or something. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice because I'm speaking so much. We're going to drop another stun totem. They got knocked up. Stun totem should stop the second set of casts. There we go. Beautiful. I'm going to drop doggos into Sundering. Sundering could have interrupted those, but I think they're dead before they start casting again. I think Sundering did interrupt those. I'm not sure. I just stood in a little splash. They're not friendly health bars. No reason to look at those right now. Okay, we have wind strikes coming through. We have doggos. Worth sacrificing one wind strike to buff the other wind strikes, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. We're going to drop another one fury totem because we've been at this for two minutes. Boss is almost dead, though. That's beautiful. Dropping another set of doggos. Tank can go in again because his, uh, his debuff is gone. Just gonna move away. We got a hover to move away quicker. I like this uh, evoker. This evoker is great. We're gonna stand right on top of the boss because that way we can have all the adds come through. We're gonna stun him with that totem. We just need to drop the totem as soon as they start spawning, and that takes care of it. And the boss is dead. Beautiful. This is such a beautiful run. Jesus. I wish the paladin wasn't out DPSing me by that much because then I could keep staying with this group. I don't know what you guys think, but I feel like if he's doing uh, 50k more overall, I feel like he's. Uh, He's kind of carrying me. I'm trying to move away, Paladin. No, we moved in the same direction. That's my bad. I'm going to turn on friendly health bars, and I'm going to move over to this corner here. That way we won't get stunned. You can keep hitting him as any melee class if you just get to the right to the edge of the thing. I think it looks basically like you're already in it. We're going to drop Doom Winds here because he's a beefy son of a gun. And yeah, I'm going to say son of a gun because I'm trying to swear less. I genuinely, genuinely am. Uh, especially Nebulator uh, shared a picture of his uh, newborn child watching a video. Well, he, obviously Nebel's watching it, and uh, I think his son's name is Isaac, is also watching it while Nebel's watching it. It was super cute to see, and that is the best reason for me not to swear that I've heard yet. Not that I've heard many reasons for me not to swear. I don't think anyone's complaining about me swearing. Actually, no, one person did point out that they're not a big fan of the increasing number of F-bombs. That was one of the big catalyst towards me not wanting to swear as much anymore. I did also just in general try to swear less, even before that person said anything. I cannot remember their name. We're going to use a gust of wind here just to get up because I'm just absolutely unable to do it with that giant ass mount. We've pulled the boss, it looks like, because we pulled the, the pets that she has. I'm going to drop doggos, and we're going to try and cleave as hard as possible to kill these hyenas. That's the big thing here, is to kill the hyenas quickly, because it's important to take kill the hyenas. That way, what you can do is, we're going to kick that. This DK tank is just so fast. I can never kick anything. It looks like I'm horrible at kicks, because I just, I just get most of my kicks eaten up by the <laughs> freaking tank. I'm going to step. Oh, I got knocked up by a volcanic, so I can't step further away. I wanted to step further away from the boss so that we have somewhere to kite the hyenas into, but it works out. 
I'm going to drop a slow totem on top of the hyenas. I have aggro. I'm on the other side of the boss, far away from them, so I'm not too worried about it. Mitas is going on me. I'm going to kite them into this. I'm going to have to kite the other hyena into the other pool. Rather, into the other thing. New traps coming down on me, so we're good on that. One hyena is moving over. I just tried to kick it again, but the tank is just too fast. My guys... Honestly, if it's not the freaking paladin carrying me, it's the tank carrying me. Holy shit, it's so nice to have an amazing tank. It makes such a big difference. I feel like tanks really make or break the group. There's a rabbit hyena right next to me. I'm moving as fast as I can. There's two trapped over here. One's going to get trapped over there. I would prefer them to kill it before we have to use any more traps. Good, we did. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm going to drop a slow totem on those. I don't have a defensive available. I'm going to get shot here, I think. Do I need to group heal? I don't think I do need to group heal. Okay, we're good. Meat toss coming through, but there's no hyenas up because people are cleaving them down fast enough and the tank's allowing it by positioning the way he is. You have new guys coming through. I'm going to electrocute them so that they go towards us. That puts them in this. Ah, finally, I got a kick in before the tank could. I think he was just out of range, quite literally. I'm going to drop this over here so that the hyenas that come from the bridge just get instantly CC'd by that while they're running for towards us. Uh, the meat thing is on the paladin. We're going to slow the hyenas down if possible. Okay, we have doom winds up, so we're going to try and do some actual DPS here. Focusing on my actual rotation right now. Ensnaring trap is down. We're going to try and put it down here. That's too far back. I think I got hit by something. I got a bop because I had the bleed on me from the hyenas. We're going to kick that. Hey, we got another kick in. I have a bop up, so I shouldn't be afraid of the hyenas, but I also shouldn't walk into the trap, right? We're going to try and cleave down these hyenas. We interrupted a crippling bite. That's good because that's a lot of damage. This guy's going down. We're trying to heal him. We're trying to heal him. That's unfortunate. Boss is almost dead. We shouldn't battle res the evoker. I'm so flustered here. I just didn't do much damage because it was flustered. We're going to try and res the evoker. Evoker's already res. Was that a battle res? I feel like that was a battle res, but I guess we have multiple, so it's not a huge deal. I'm going to kick that. I think the DK tried to kick it too. Finally, I beat him. I'm just going to knock that guy down. Keep him going. There we go. That was a death grip as well, I think. We're going to drop a stun totem to prevent these swirlies from going through. DK death gripped again. We're going to try and drop some cooldowns on this. We're going to kick that just to be able to make that guy move if necessary. I don't know if there's a... Whatchamacallit? War Scourge in this pool? There isn't. Yeah, DK says that was a giga waste of CR, and I agree. We wasted a, gen a CR to bring the... What's his face? Back up. The Evoker. Because it looked like much faster than a regular res, right? So, I don't know. It just it, I feel like it was a bit of a waste. I'm going to hold my Doom Winds here. It's just one enemy. I don't want to use my Doom Winds here when I can use it on a big pull that's coming up. Because I believe there will be a big pull coming up. We'll see if we go left or right. Hey, I beat the tank to the kick. Okay, I'm getting my kicks in. That's good. That's good. But yeah, we'll see if we go left or right. If we go left, that means we're skipping some mobs. Very good. We don't have a priest to mind soothe these two, so we have to go left if we want to skip them, and the tank seems to want to skip them. I'm going to get off of my mount here because it's gigantic. Okay, well, that one guy pulled. We're going to kick that so we can move these. I don't know if the tank wants to adjust a route. Yeah, he wants to immediately adjust a route to do these. Uh, we're going to drop a stun totem on top of all that because that's going to prevent the swirlies. Tank already stunned it. We're going to use our doom winds here. Sundering coming through. We're going to kick this guy to make him group up. Filth colors are doing their little infinite casts. I'm not going to use my knockback here. I would love to use my knockback here to prevent these, but they're going to probably die. I'm going to knock him back right about... Mm, I think this is fine. I stood in a swirly like a dumbass. I'm going to wait for a res. I feel like a res is faster than running because this is about to die. Maybe. Stood in a swirly. Yeah, I'll wait for a res. I feel like that's faster than getting... Uh, whatchamacallit's than running back all the way. At least I'm not getting CR'd. I don't want to waste my reincarnation on this because it's not like this isn't a high risk pull or anything. I'm going to grab the cauldron over here because there's going to be diseases up there that I need to take care of. And I don't have a disease to spell. I have to do it uh, with the cauldron. I don't know if the tank wants to pull that rod hexer, so I'm not going to pull for the tank that's doing extremely, extremely well. Okay, he did want to pull it. He's doing a big pull. I dropped a stunt totem here. These swirlies are very scary. I, I can never pay enough to, attention to them. We have a double rod hexer pull, so I'm glad I have my disease dispel thing from the cauldron. I'm going to move away, and I'm going to use the cauldron as soon as I can. We have two paladins, so the disease dispel shouldn't be an issue, but you never know. Uh, we have the rot, rotting surge thing going through all the time. We're just going to use our CC here. We're going to knock everything back that's low HP. I don't want him to die on top of this guy that's spinning, because we don't have a soothe of any sort. 
We do have the uh, evoker, I guess, but maybe he's not specced into it because I haven't seen him use it. Did I just see him use it while I'm talking about him not using it? I'm not sure. At any rate, we got to kill these rot hexers. I'm commentating a lot more than I'm DPSing. I should fix that. I should fix that right away. I don't want to use my Doom Winds here. I want to have that for the opener on the boss. We have 20 seconds until Bloodlust, so... We're looking good. We got percent. This tank's a beast. Eight minutes left. It's a long-ass boss fight, though, because of all the switches. We're going to Bloodlust on pull, I believe. We're waiting for Bloodlust. Just two seconds. There we go. Wind Fury Totem. We're going to Bloodlust. Doom Winds. I should have used Doggos first. We're going to use it right away. We have Bloodlust, so the globals are very short. I'm not too terrified. Like, I'm not too upset about missing my Doggos first. Resetting Wind Storm Strike. Trying to reset Storm Strike again. We have no procs. We reset Storm Strikes again. We're switching to the Totem. Dropping Doggos. Trying to cleave the Totem because when we have Bloodlust, if everyone just turns around and beats on the Totem a little bit, we can cleave. But for the rest of the time, when I don't have Bloodlust up, I'm going to be smashing the Totem with single target damage all the time. We have Doggos available. We have Storm Strikes coming through. We have a reset for the Storm Strike. Got another reset for the Storm Strike. Trying to spread out, make sure we don't all get hit by that. I'm saving my uh, group heal here for a situation if we do get dots. Because the dots just hurt a lot. Like the red dot that you get from standing in either that or getting hit by the totems cast. There's another totem. I'm going to jump over to it. I'm slow about switching to them because I'm not paying much attention. That's something I need to fix. Okay, there we go. That was a bit close, but I feel like we were safe enough. Got another totem coming down. We're going to switch to the totem. Key thing is to just make sure you switch to the totems. As long as you switch to the totems, you're fine. Okay, got new doggos coming down. Holding the doom winds. There we go. Holding four doom winds, I should say. And now we zoom zoom big time. I feel like I don't need to save cooldowns for the totems. It's not a high enough key level where the totems are that beefy. We're going to drop doggos onto totem and storm strike the bejesus out of it. As long as we keep getting resets. We do have a reset with the lightning bolt. Very good. We have wind strikes coming through. We're beating the shit out of the boss with wind strikes now. That's beautiful to see. It's a lot of damage. Flex tape guy is on the screen right now if I'm listening carefully and editing. We have a totem coming through. I'm trying not to stand on top of people so we don't get hit by multiples in that. Beautiful. We have doggos and doom winds up. Or sorry, doggos and sundering up. I'm going to save sundering for the totem just to burst it real quick. There's the rot burst totem that we're going to burst with our thing. There we go. Sundering. Then we have extra mastery. Yeah, that totem's gone when I use Sundering. A beautiful thing to see is when somebody has a beacon and they drop a beacon on the totem and it just bursts like a pimple. A lot of bursting going on in this dungeon. Very burst heavy dungeon with the rot burst totems. Why am I saying burst that way? But we gotta burst some more on this rot burst totem. Okay, there we go. That was a little bit close, but we got it. Very smooth around. Very nice. I think the biggest mistake I made was basically just standing in that one swirly, which is not that huge of a mistake. I have Doom Winds up, so I'm not refreshing my totem. We have Sundering coming through during Doom Winds. That's beautiful. We have the totem switching. Totem switching? The Bursting Totem, the Rot Burst Totem, the Totem with the Burst, Couscous Totem, and the boss should be going down here. Yeah, we're not switching for the next uh, totem. That's okay. The boss should be down before the totem even lands. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. We have another 20 timed. It was the Brackenhide. That's amazing. I think I only had a 19 Brackenhide before this. No, I had a 21 Brackenhide. What am I saying? Anyway, that's beautiful. 14 extra rating. We're getting there bit by bit. That was an awesome run. I cannot stay in this run, unfortunately, because the Paladin is just shitting on me in DPS. He's got 40, almost 40k more DPS than I do. We have a 19 Neltharian's Lair, so I'm just, ah, that's a pain in the ass. I've seen how the last boss goes when the tank isn't very good, so we're just gonna reroll it, see if we got a VP or something. We got a Neltharus, oh Jesus. Yeah, well, anyway, see you guys around, and we're gonna port out. Like I said, unfortunately, I can't stay with the group because the Paladin just does that much more DPS than I do, and going into the group again with that Paladin there feels like I'm just trying to get carried by the Paladin. Well, in all actuality, I'm probably just getting carried by the DK, because the DK was absolutely insane. We tried to time a 20 in Lotharis. Unfortunately, the host of the group, which was the Druid, was very inexperienced. He didn't know how chains worked on trash. He also didn't seem to know how the second boss worked, or rather how Chargrath worked. He died to the same thing two pulls in a row, which was the circle from the boss when he's in the intermission phase where you're supposed to stun him. The circle basically one-shots you, unless you are extremely tanky, which he wasn't as a balanced Druid. What he was doing in melee range of the boss as a balanced Druid, I also couldn't tell you, but unfortunately, after we died for the second time on the same boss, the group decided to call it quit. 
After that, we tried to do another 20 Nelthoris. This one we actually managed to time. The tank was a little slow and clumsy with Sanguine, but it ended up not being that big of a problem. We actually had an incredibly intense Forge Master, and I'm just going to let it play out. We have Time Warp coming in from the Mage, so I don't have to do anything about it. We're going to use Group Heal here right off the bat. I don't feel like I needed to maybe use that. I don't know. Trying to stand in a way where I do not send swirlies onto the tank. Trying to avoid standing in these swirlies. Use the defensive out of panic because I thought I had to move forward to hit the boss. But I did manage to avoid everything. My defensive is still rolling for this big AoE so that's okay. I'm going to step away just to remove the risk of dropping swirlies on top of others. If you look at them, the swirlies will not go onto the person you're looking at. Because they go to your left and your right. They don't go straight, in, straight ahead of you. This time the tank did it correctly. What you're supposed to do as a, as a person that can charge forward or roll forward or anything like that is wait for the swirly to appear on the ground and then charge or roll forward. Otherwise, you're just going to end up putting it the circle on top of everyone. I'm going to self-heal here. I'm going to look at the mage to heal them. There we go. We got some heals through. That's good. I'm going to wait for doggos and then we're going to use sundering. There we go. And wind strikes are still rolling. We have storm strike spam going on right now. He put it on the table. That's not ideal. I can't hit the boss right now. We're going to put some shocks onto it. Oh, no. How the hell did that happen? I'm pretty sure it's the paladin again. Uh, not because the paladin did something wrong, but because it's just impossible to avoid those pulls not happening. I guess we have to deal with it. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to time this. We have the paladin, the battle res, the mage. Hopefully he does. We're going to try and kick these as much as we can. We're going to do a stun like that. I don't know where we're not battle resing. We should battle res the mage. Avoid the swirlies. I have my group heal coming through in a second here. I'm going to use the group heal. Try to hit the boss as much as I can and get some heals through. The mage is very squishy so he's having a hard time surviving. I need to step away so I don't drop any bullshit on these guys. I'm just waiting. I'm going to target this guy because I can inter interrupt his bleed. The healer just died. I don't have enough heals to keep us through this because the next time this guy does his AoE, we're basically dead. Dragonbone Spear coming through. We're going to try and stun that. I do not know where to stand here. I'm going to try and heal myself up to full. Gorillies are coming through. Oof. Do we focus the boss? What do we do? Like, what, what do I do here? I'm trying to heal myself up to full. The healer is back up. I guess we had another battle res. We're trying to direct this like this. I'm trying to just spam heals. Volcanic took me out, but I have reincarnation. We're going to try and off heal ourselves again. I'm trying to focus on killing the boss because I don't know how quickly we can kill this trash. And if the trash... Uh, okay, we, everyone's alive. We had so many battle reses available, I guess. That's beautiful. That's actually amazing. I think we can kill this now. Trying to just stay alive. That's my primary focus right now. I'm going to move away from the group again. I'm going to use my defensive because I've got the dot on me. Boss should be going down here. Hopefully we kill... Yeah, we killed boss first. We're going to lightning lasso this thing to interrupt it. We don't need that bleed damage coming through. It's a lot of damage and that's the boss dead. Holy shit, we recovered from that. I cannot believe it. That means we still have a good chance of timing this. Nine minutes. We need a bit of trash in the last boss and I feel like we can still do this. Dragon Bone Spear. That was a good recovery. The rest of the dungeon pretty much went without incident. We managed to time it, and I got 25 rating. This Ulamon 20 run was going decently well. We did waste a bloodlust on Emeron because a few people went down early on in the fight, but we decided to do a quick reset. We reached the last boss with enough time to actually time it. Unfortunately, the trash before the last boss. I genuinely couldn't tell you what went through our tank's brain. Probably not much at all. This was genuinely upsetting because there was no reason for us to pull the two time reavers while we were still fighting one. Not only did we not need them for percent, but they are generally extremely dangerous, and you shouldn't pull them unless absolutely necessary, which it is almost never necessary to pull them unless you did some crazy skips earlier on in the dungeon pulling them nearly wiped us i managed to reincarnate and rest all of us but even with that faster reset we didn't have enough time to beat the timer on the boss and we ended up with an untimed 20 oldemon for this Neltharian's layer 20 there's really not much to say the tank was a little bit slow with the trash but overall we were doing fine unfortunately on the last boss he died to the first magma wave of all things and then broke a crystal with landslide this resulted in us wiping because basically we needed to reset because the ad would have come out and we didn't have a way to survive the ad without a crystal stun once we wiped from it he rage quit and just went offline this was an extremely timeable key we could have definitely timed it he just needed to stay online unfortunately that's not what happened so we had a bricked Notharian's layer 20 that wasted a a lot of my time. 
We then tried to do an Altharian's Lair 21. The host kept disconnecting multiple times, but also kept coming back quickly. The group was so good that we were able to time it even if the rogue kept disconnecting occasionally. Unfortunately, right before the second boss, the rogue went offline and just stayed offline for quite a while, so the group decided to call it quits. This was very disappointing because if it hadn't been for the rogue just giving up or their internet connection just completely crapping out, I don't know which one it is, we would have probably timed that key. The one nice thing about this is at least we didn't get to the last boss and then brick it, which has been the theme for most of the dungeons. So we had that going for us, which is nice, I guess. So in this Ulamon 20, basically everything went fine, and then we get to the last boss with plenty of time to kill it, and we choke. The tank died to a tank buster. Instead of instantly resetting because we don't have a way to actually battle res the tank, because he's the only battle res in the group, we kept going. I couldn't tell you why we kept going. I think everybody just kind of panicked. I remember thinking like, oh, do I keep the warrior alive? No, no lad, you don't keep the warrior alive. The first send breath that comes through is just going to wipe out whoever it's targeting. And what also didn't help about the reset is the fact that the paladin took a very, very, very long time to jump up and do the skip. It probably would have been a lot faster to just let the paladin die to the two time reavers and then res him into the boss room. But hindsight is 2020. We can sit here and analyze it all day long. What I could have done better there is maybe called for a reset sooner after the tank went down. But I think, like I said, everyone panicked and uh, yeah. So we didn't end up timing it, which is very unfortunate. And it's another example of the key being bricked on the last boss and wasting a whole bunch of my time. This Freehold 21 was actually a pretty good run. I remember getting salty on the first boss, but that's because we had two demon hunters jumping around all the time while I'm trying to position so that the frontal cone from the first boss doesn't actually hit anyone else. It also didn't help that the tank kept moving the boss for some reason instead of just sitting and waiting. I think the reason the tank kept moving was to make sure that the poop doesn't drop on us because we've got five melee, right? What could have been done was just let the paladin set off to the side and bait the poop which I think would have worked. I'm not 100% sure, but at any rate, it was frustrating because I just couldn't figure out how to position relative to the demon hunters because they kept jumping around and doing their little dashes because momentum is a thing. Anyway, we managed to time it. It was a pretty good run. I was pretty happy with it. We had 15 deaths, but we didn't have any full resets, right? Every time we died, we managed to regroup without the mobs resetting fully because somebody was left alive. So it all ended up working out and we got a 21 freehold timed. Getting started with a 20 old amon, what you see with the group you see on the screen, with the CU group on the screen. CU group, bye. Put a focus on that guy, waiting for the tank to catch up and actually start hitting things so I don't die. Very good, beautiful. Moving out of that. Oh no, I'm gonna yeet myself over there. We're gonna interrupt that. I'm just gonna go to town here. I don't give a shit too much about the interrupts. The chain lightnings haven't been killing us even when I'm unable to kick them, so I'm just gonna try and kill shit. If I kill shit faster, they can't kill us, right? We got a Wind Fury Totem because we got an Arms Warrior. It's very good to give him a Wind Fury Totem. He'll get extra rage. Actually, they're kind of not starred for rage at all. I'm trying to stun that Chain Lightning. I'm trying to kill this guy so he doesn't get healed by doing one of his uninterruptible st stomps or whatever. I'm going to purge this. Arms are coming through. We're going to use our Stone Skin Totem. I really need to focus on doing more AoE DPS. I feel like that's the department where I'm the shittiest threat th at the moment. So I'm just trying to... Take care of that. Tank's trying to kite, but he's kind of just keeping them really, really still. I'm going to do a knockback here, spread all of those out. Ooh, did I just pull that? I did not. Haha, <laughs> I don't give a shit then. We good. This guy should get killed in the background. I don't know. Nobody hit him. We have ranged, but they're not doing shit about it. There we go. Now he's dead. Very good. I don't want to stress out too much about the trash. I'm going to kick this. And we have Sundering available to interrupt that stuff. By that stuff, I mean the, the other chain lightning that was coming through. We're going to drop doggos. Keep trying to chain lightning, crash lightning. We're going to drop doom winds here. I don't even care. We're just going to use cooldowns on cooldown. Right now, this dungeon, I think I just want to try and DPS as much as possible. I see a chain lightning in the back and I have an interrupt, so I'm going to use it. Again, still trying to just do a shit ton of damage. We are going... Are we going to do that boss? I don't think we should do that boss. I think the tanks just doesn't have anywhere to go anymore, which is fine. These guys are extremely slow. We're going to try and knock that out of this sanguine, but as much as I can do. These guys are going to start casting Chain Lightning. I could have just line aside of that, but he would have cast it again right after that. I'm trying to stay away from people because the Chain Lightning is going to come through from the mob. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. Okay. Just zoog zoog. I don't care. If they cast, they cast. Other people can kick for once. I'm going to kick that guy that's in the back. I'm going to drop a Stun Totem on top of all of this. Stun Totem came in clutch. I'm going to look at the Berserker to funnel into Berserkers. I'm going to tar and send through all of that. That's beautiful. They all got knocked back by a Typhoon. That's also good. And drop a slow totem on him. Our tough guy got knocked the f out. We're gonna knock everything back because all of them are casting shit. Just trying to 
kill all these stragglers that are low HP but doing lots of damage. They do pull damage even though they're low HP. That was a really, really big pull. I don't know if that was really good because there's a lot of sanguine healing going on. That's almost 10 million sanguine healing right here. But I think we're finally done with that giant ass pull. And we're waiting on the healer's mana before we pull. That's good. I'm going to drop a wind fury totem. Drop a stone skin totem once the fight starts. Right about now. Because I'm not going to have time to use it otherwise. And we're going to try start zugzugan. Again, I'm going to focus on DPS. I'm just going to try and kick that in the back when he starts casting. Okay, we have death grips coming for that, so that's good. Sweet, hard switching to totem this time around. I don't care about what other people do. It's not my job to keep the health bars up. And the next totem, I am going to use my group heal just to help out because I think the shaman just popped quite a few cooldowns to keep us up there. Thundering is going through. I'm going to just jump out of the way. The ambushers are there, so no. The Geomancer is here. We're going to kick that to make a move over. I don't know if the DK has the Death Grip available. Dropping Doggos. I will have Sundering soon. I'm going to hold Sundering until I have Doom Winds. There's the Totem. We're going to drop everything onto the Totem. We're going to use the Group Heal here because I have a lot of damage coming through. It's going to be big heals. Healer can then focus on other things if he needs to. I failed my kick on that. I don't really care. They're going to get cleaved down here pretty soon. So it doesn't matter too much that I missed the kick. That's going to get killed before he casts the Chain Lightning, so I don't even need to kick it. We're looking for the Geomancer. We're going to interrupt it. That'll move it over. Nice. I should just let the tank do that, and I should save mine for the in uh, Chain Lightning Interrupt. So I'll just start saving my Interrupt for Chain Lightning. And drop a Stun Totem right here in the middle. That should be where it all congregating. Hard switching to the Quaking Totem again. I'm going to use my Defensive here, because this is where we're taking the most damage. We're going to kick the Chain Lightning. That's going to make us take way too much damage if I let it go through. We have Doggos available. Bloodlust got interrupted. So far, so good. We're doing quite well, honestly, with this group. I'm going to drop a new Wind Fury Totem because it just ran out. Resetting my Storm, storm Strike with Lightning Bolt. Please let me get out of that. Thank you. Okay. Geomancer's back there. I'm just putting Focus on him. He's getting Death Grip. Good. I'm going to put down a Stone Skin Totem because I had a Global available. Nothing to really use it on. I'm going to interrupt the Chain Lightning. That's my main priority there. Because now I can trust that other people are going to group it. Do we stay on boss? It looks like we stay on boss. Yeah, I shouldn't have even switched. Okay, we're going to drop a movement speed totem right here. I'm going to relocate it over there. And we should be able to zoog zoog down this boss. We're going to off heal to be full health when the boss fight starts. We have 27% mana on the healer. We're waiting on the mana. I put focus on Olaf so I can interrupt him when he does his defensive stance or whatever. We're probably going to try and funnel into Eric. So we're going to put a skull on Eric. Maybe that helps people focus on it. There we go. Skull on Eric. Trying to avoid Balog's frontal. And that's the whole fight. Okay, he's charging. I'm going to wait for her tank to group them up. Okay, there we go. I'm going to drop all my shit now. Shit is being dropped as we speak. Defensive thing is being interrupted. We're going to drop a Wind Fury Totem because I'm out of globals. Don't have anything else to do. May as well buff the warrior. Longboat ride is coming through. We're going to try and position over here because we can then immediately DPS them. We want to make these drop over here. We're not at the center of the room where we're going to have to fight, but somebody's not getting the memo. I'm going to jump through over here. I have the group heal available, but it doesn't seem to be necessary. We're going to try and get over here on Eric. We managed to spread them out enough so that we can actually stay and DPS here. That's good. Charge is going through over there. Wild Cleave's coming through. i got to be careful of that. Dropping new doggos. Ricocheting shield is on me. I'm going to use my defensive here. I don't think it jumped to anyone. I'm going to interrupt that shield zone. I'm trying to cleave now. Because they're all nicely stacked up thanks to the tank actually knowing what to do. As opposed to most tanks that I've been running this dungeon with. I'm going to jump over here. Got to be careful for Baylog. He's going to do the arrow soon. Eric pieced out. People were actually focusing Eric for once. That's beautiful. Heavy arrow coming through. So I got to stand behind him. DK got hit by it. Doesn't matter. Wild Cleave's coming through. I got to step away. We're going to try and keep this guy alive. We're going to interrupt that. This guy should be going down soon. At 10%, I think he fucks off. Which is just about now. Beautiful. We got new totems going down over here. Everyone's been in buffed by the totem. We're going to move it back over there. Keep people moving nice and quick. This time around, I have the actual correct talents. So I have my cleanse spirit. I can remove curses. I don't have to feel so much pressure during the warder section to keep interrupting things. I'm not going to say anything. Usually I say I can slow them, but tanks usually don't react to that at all. They kind of just do whatever they wanted to do to begin with. Tank is just huffing it. He's moving fast. I got an AoE stun I can use here. You're going to get grouped up over here. Hopefully they get caught by the stun one of them didn't because the tanks just gripping them around and drop the slow totem here so tank can keep 
very easily kiting them and now i'm going to try and do as much damage as i can we're going to use doom on these motherfuckers because i don't like them died to them far too many times trying to keep them out of this we're going to knock this guy over just spread them out this is a little bit uncomfortable for the for the tank i'm going to stun this one with lightning lasso not perfect because it doesn't actually trigger that I have my totem down soon, trying to slow them. We have my slow totem coming down, and then we have the stun totem coming in. That should be enough to finish this off. Beautiful. There we go. And no sanguine healing done because we managed to kill them all about the same time. A little bit messy from the knockbacks and everything, but I'm okay with it. Group is relatively consistent with DPS across overall. In that last fight, Maelstrom was just huffing it but i was trying not to stand in sanguine he can just kind of stand by the side and pump it uh i don't know what we're waiting for oh healer mana maybe i i don't know maybe the tank is typing something as far as information is concerned nope he's just kind of standing there maybe he was waiting for one of his cooldowns to be able to do this fight i don't know got wind fury totem waiting for these orbs to go down there's the knockback tough guy got healed up bleed is on him bleed is on me i'm gonna use my defensive Defensive should be enough. The healer should be focusing heals on me, so I don't need to do anything other than the defensive. And then for the next one, I'm going to use my group heal. Titanic Empowerment coming through. Tank is moving in into the stun. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to stun it willy-nilly, randomly, for, for no f***ing reason. You're supposed to stun it with the Titanic Empowerment is being cast. That way you have the shortest amount of time fighting the boss at maximum stacks. Every time you stun her, she gets a stack and does more damage. Bleed is not on me, I don't care. If it's on the warrior, that's fine. Warrior's beefy, tanky, motherfucker, he can do it. Push come to... I don't know who stunned it there. I'm just gonna trust that it was worth it. Trying to drop new doggos. I, mean, I don't have a defensive or anything. I'm using, your group, I'm using the group heal here. I, I was able to dodge it or parry it or some shit. And you can do that to the stomp, which is really nice. Okay, we're gonna... We don't have to do anything special here. I'm waiting for the next time I get the shard. I'm going to use my... I don't have to use anything. If the shard is not on me, I can just keep DPSing. I'm nice and safe. I'm going to use that Sundering, the hitter from a bit of a distance. And also just to get it on cooldown. The Shaman might need help now, I think. The Shaman might need help. So I'm going to try and spend some of my Maelstrom to heal the Shaman. Because Shaman has probably ran out of defensive just about now. Shaman went down. The healer just wasn't able to de beat the defensive. And I understand that. It's really rough. Resonating Orb, we're going to drop the Resonating Orb right on top of her. Okay, dropping a new Wind Fury Totem during Doom Winds like a dum-dum. Healer went down. We have Battle Res available for the Healer and the Shaman, it looks like, or Shaman reincarnated, I'm not sure. Shaman getting all of my off heals here. I'm trying to give him as many as I can. Oh, I got stomped. That hurts really bad. Group heal in 45 seconds. I have my defensive available if I get it. Hopefully I get it. If that Shaman gets it again, I don't know how we're going to survive it. How he's going to survive it, I should say. And she's dead. I wasn't even paying attention to her health. Heal the warrior. Heal the warrior. Keep healing him. He doesn't have anything to hit, so he can't actually heal himself. Okay. Healer is drinking. I'm off healing. Very nice. While the healer drinks, I may as well try to get 10 seconds of eating in so I can get this. Uh, tank doesn't give a shit about my food, so we're just going to keep going. Speaking of food, I should probably eat. I'm really hungry. I haven't had anything since lunch. I'm not going to be... Actually, I can light, light, lightning lasso this. Stormbolt came in and knockback came in. I'm gonna wait to see multiple casts here. We're gonna drop it now. Yeah, it's hard to predict that. I'm gonna save my Sundering for the next one I see. I'm gonna kick this because there's not much else to kick here. There's no warder here. There's one hail of stone. We're gonna Sundering for that. And now we can just DPS because I'm out of shit. Like I can knock back. I can torrent stun, I guess. I'll do the torrent stun. There we go. Bear roar coming through. Oh, I'm going to use a defensive because I ripped aggro there. Cleave is coming through. I want to look out for that. going to focus star, target this one, kick this curse, and I can dispel the other one if it comes through. Okay, that came through like that. We're going to knock them back that way. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to knock them back this way, I guess. We're just going to keep knocking them around the room like ragdolls. Need to get behind the custodian and we're going to hit. Don't want to get hit by that cleave. It really hurts. We're going to sundering just to pop these like a pimple. Tank is moving him around with his abomination limb. Okay, Hail of Stones coming down. We're going to drop a stun totem on top of all of this. I want to save my group heal for the next group. I'm going to kick this curse to keep this guy moving. And also to prevent the curse from going off. If a curse does go off, it's not the end of the world. I do have a decurse because I'm not in the wrong talents for once. I feel like the last five dungeons have just been in the wrong talents because I keep switching them randomly. I'm never in the right ones. I have a knockback available. Okay, thank you. The Typhoon did the trick. We're going to knock them all around because I saw Halo of Stone. 
May as well get the Halo Stone out of there. And they're all dead. I'm going to self-heal to try and top myself off before we start this. Okay, we're getting started. We're going to put focus on the warder. Been free totem, stone skin totem. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of that because Halo Stone is going to start coming through very quickly. There's the AoE. We're going to use the group heal and just go to town. Doggos and chain lightning. I'm going to try and get rid of that. Tank's pulling more spiders. I don't know if that's the call here. I don't have a defensive. Actually, yeah, I just used it. That's why I don't have it, dum dum. I thought it wasn't cooldown from before, but I just used it. Because I saw I had aggro. I'm just going to use it whenever I have aggro. Which is relatively often because it burst pretty hard. I'm going to put focus on star tank. It needs to actually have aggro if he wants to do these kinds of pulls. I have Tarn stun. When I see multiple casts, I'll use it. Two sonic bursts are coming through. I think I got all of them. One of them... All of them have been cast, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I just used Doomans right before the boss where I want to use Bloodlust, but I don't give a shit. I just need to do more damage. Wherever you do more damage, it's good. As long as it doesn't mean you wipe because you didn't have enough damage to clear a phase, which I think we will. We'll have Bloodlust rolling right at the start, and I feel like that's okay. These guys might start casting, but it doesn't matter because they're dead. Okay, very much a stream of consciousness right now. I feel like I'm finally doing decent DPS. I feel like I've just been sandbagging this entire day. Ooh, it's rough. I guess that is where we want to tank. I don't know what that ping was. We're getting started. We're going to Bloodlust on pull. I don't really give a shit. Uh, we should not be tanking it that close. Tank should move. Tank should really, 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 really move. Unless he thinks he can just tank those, I guess. I'm going to move away. I'm gonna let that guy DPS. Everyone's doing more DPS than I am, so I may as well let them do the DPS. Plus, I don't have cooldowns rolling, so I don't really mind if I have to move away. Tank is just tanking. The tank is tanking one of those every time. I'm just gonna move away. I have wind strikes up, so I can DPS from a distance. Tough guy got taken out. Because we're standing right next to one of these. That's just so... I'll be honest, that's really f***ing stupid. I just walked into another one. That's even more stupid because I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to reincarnate. A group is split off from me. I need to heal myself. I'm going to try and do some damage here. I don't think I need to use a potion. Oh, I'm going to use Doomans on this. I'm going to try and do as much damage as possible so that the group, when it gets to it, can just finish them off quite easily. If they have any of them left over, like that one, I'll be able to take care of, take care of it. I have Maelstrom weapon procs to keep healing myself. Like... If the damage isn't that high, I can actually heal myself quite fine. I'm able to finish this because I got zero procs going right now. Okay, they should be able to finish it off quite nicely. I'm going to heal myself. We have Doggos. We have Wind Fury Totem for our Arms Warrior. We are again standing between two of these guys. That's exactly the worst possible place for you to stand, my guy. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to use Group Heal here to keep everyone nice and healthy. While these Embers go through. Tank finally understood that he shouldn't be standing there. I'm going to use a potion to keep myself healthy. I'm going to Sundering. Group heal is doing some work, I think. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, I'm unable to focus on anything other than being afraid of these guys constantly. I'm going to self-heal as much as I can. I don't know why we're standing between two guys that are putting orbs out constantly. This is the single worst possible spot to stand. I don't know how to do this with what the tank is doing right now trying to just literally just trying to survive at this point it's a fight for survival the healer's dead i'm gonna have to help the warrior survive and myself tank can take care of himself he's a f***ing bullet dk he doesn't give a shit doing another doom wins this boss fight is very messy if we break the key it's probably because of this fight but i don't know what to tell you but like we're just positioning between two of the guys that are putting out the freaking orbs and it's killing us because nobody can get away from the orbs because they reach you very quickly. Warrior is able to keep himself alive with Victory Rush. We're going to have to do multiple laps of this, I think. I have, can't do as much damage as I would like to because I have to keep using the Maelstrom weapon, the DPS. I think we got a battle res on the healer. I don't know. Like, This is such a slow fight, but I guess we have extra time to make up for it. So, I'm going to shut up about the choice of tactics and I'm going to try to adapt to the situation because I keep criticizing people instead of just trying to you know, do my job, which is DPS. Here we go. Doggos into dropping everything on that. I wasted my Sundering, but 33k. That thing's dead. Boss should be coming in now. We're missing one DPS, but we should be able to kill this before the next intermission, I'm hoping. Warrior's not spell reflecting the clap. Either that or he had it on cooldown. I don't know. I'm gonna use my defensive here. Try to stay away from people. Through the defensive, I got put into the thing. Into a uh, Spore Cloak triggering, so... That's how much damage that does. Uh, the boss is about to go down the middle again, I think. Come on, Sundering. Just please die. 
please just die. No, he's gonna go into middle after this. I'm not even gonna bother healing myself. I just need him to die. There we go. I'm gonna start rezzing this guy as soon as I'm able to find him. Right, I got the res so the healer can drink. Pop this guy off. Healer has dash so he can get over there pretty quickly. We're just pulling more because we gotta make up time for having 15 people die in this fight. That knockback wasn't too bad. I'm gonna try and kick this guy when he starts casting to get him moving. Um, we're pulling that one extra guy that is you never need to pull that guy unless you're doing something really wrong with your route I'm trying to line aside all of these i guess i'm gonna drop a stun totem on top of him there's a hail of stone coming through i'm gonna sundering as well i'm gonna step right here so i don't get hit by that aoe okay hail of stone is coming through i'm gonna knock him just a little bit now ebonstone golem might have to stand in some sanguine for this okay he doesn't good Good position by the tank. Good moving by the tank. And there's clap. We're just going to st stand here and do this. Um, I don't know what to use on these guys to interrupt them, honestly. I have nothing. So I can just sit there and watch. Tank real or warrior realized that he should also CC sometimes. This is a massive fucking pull. I don't know what this, what the point of this is. I ran out of CC like two minutes ago. Probably should have kept sundering to keep CCing. I don't know. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of all of that. I need to keep moving. Oh, okay. I gotta admit, Elemental looks really f***ing cool when he does the Stormkeeper thing and you have a bunch of lightning across your screen. I'm looking to knock back when I need to for these guys to get low. Or like, when these guys get low is when I want to do my knockback. I'm gonna do the knockback now because there's a hail of storm coming through and I don't want that to... First of all, I don't want it to sit in the Sanguine that it was in. Second of all, I just don't want to deal with the damage from it. Tank is doing some crazy shit to try to make up for the damage we're, we're lacking now, or rather the time we're lacking, but we're actually kind of okay on time, in my opinion. I'm gonna try and kill this guy before he reaches the rest of the group and dies on top of them and gives them a bunch of sanguine healing. There we go. There you go, buddy. Just fall over, please. Thank you. Looking at the warder. I'm gonna kick that curse so I don't have to cleanse it. Cheaper to spend an interrupt than a global. I'm trying to do a bunch of damage. I don't know what this pull is. We're just going full on ham. There's a lot of these guys here. I'm going to try and knock them back. That cleave is terrifying. I'm going to use a defensive here because I'm probably going to get hit by a bunch of shit. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. I'm looking to knock these guys back. And I'm going to try and kill them before they reach. Oh, the death grip. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure they get on top of the, the guys that we're trying to keep them away from. Please just die. Thank you. It wasn't a death grip. It was the, the thing. I'm going to use my earth elemental totem just to be a bit tankier in this pull because I'm going to stand in these. I don't give a shit anymore. Healer can deal with it. If it was fortified, I would be terrified. But I think on fortified, we wouldn't even do this pull. So it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm going to give this guy some loving with a off heal right there. Okay. Not too shabby. We survived it. As long as we survive it, I don't really give a shit. I should stop criticizing and just deal, adapt to the situation. Although sometimes you just wonder what the f*** is going through somebody's head when they do some of these pulls. Uh, are we going to decurse? Never mind, somebody already decursed it. We're going to drop a stun totem on top of this. There's a bunch of dispel thing going off. I guess I'll dispel this guy. Never mind, he already got purged. There's somebody doing great work with utility. And it's nice. It's nice to see. I guess it's... This run is going so well probably because there's multiple people actually taking care of the utility instead of just me. So... That's a welcome change. I'm going to slow that guy so he doesn't get to us and drop the Sanguine pool there. Can I actually line of sight this? I can. Very nice. I managed to reduce some of the damage being done to me. It's always a good thing. Keep this guy moving. Come on. There we go. I'm going to put a focus on one of these guys so I can interrupt it when they do the hasten thing. Oof. I don't know. We're going to probably have to focus the Time Reaver here. Uh, yeah. I'm going to drop Doom Winds on the Time Reaver, Sundering. Everything. Hasten's coming through. We're gonna interrupt one of them. The other one got interrupted by something. We're gonna drop a stun totem on top of them. We have doggos coming through. Chain lightning, crash lightning. Very, very good. More chain lightning, more crash lightning, of course. So far, so good. Six stacks. Got renewed to seven. And this is where I want to kind of start line of sighting. I think this is good. One of the hastens went through, so we're gonna remove that. I'm gonna drop this slow. It should only slow the agent, so we can keep the agent. Fire Far away from the Time Reaver so the Time Reaver doesn't get healed. There we go. Everything's dead. I'm going to drop a Movement Speed Totem here. We're going to relocate it down there. Keep everyone nice and quick. I'm going to drop a Wind Fury Totem once I come around the corner. I'm going to just drop a nice little pull on those guys. And we're looking at the Time Reaver now. We're going to focus interrupt that Hasten. We're going to hit everything here with a nice big Sunder. Spam Chain Lightning, Crash Lightning. That's the good shit right there. We're going to drop a Stun Totem with this one global that we have. Just to reduce the damage from the Infinite Agent. We're kiting this. Very nice. I got that refresh through. I don't think I need to get the hell out of that. I can just kill this. 
And we'll give a nice little heal to this guy. Okay, jump on this, do this. Much faster than trying to jump up the wall because I'm not very good at that. Not as bad as that one paladin in the Oldamon run we had where he died to the last boss and bricked a 21k. Or was it 20 or 21? I don't I don't know. We got bloodlust. I'm going to bloodlust on pull. Waiting for the druid. Who are we waiting? We're not waiting for. We're waiting for the tank to start to get started. We got bloodlust coming in right off the bat. I'm going to use defensives here. Once I get knocked back, I'm going to go into ghost wolf. That way I can get rid of the time sink. Very nice. For the next wings, I'm going to use my the, uh, group heal. Need a wind fury totem down now that I'm out of my cooldowns and can have to spend a global on it. Time sink on me again. We're going to move over here so that I don't have to worry about where it drops. I got knocked back. Do we have a blood uh, a battle res for that guy? I hope we do. We got 5 minutes 43 to finish this boss. We might be able to do that with one DPS down. Rewind time is coming through. We're going to stand in some shit. After that, we have a wing buffet coming through. Sand breath into wing buffet. It was very scary. I'm going to use my group heal now. My thing got procced. I'm just trying to help everyone survive here with my group heal. And you get closer so I can actually hit the boss during my group heal. Hard to heal with your damage if you're not doing any. I'm getting absolutely no procs. So I'm just kind of sitting here auto attacking the boss. Wing buffet coming through. I'm going to step forward. I'm going to self heal. Time sync is on me. We're going to drop it over here so I can actually stand on top of the boss in DPS. Otherwise I'd have to keep moving. Sand breath is coming through. So luckily tank moved it off to the side. There's another wing buffet coming through. Rewind time, actually. Never mind. We're going to do wins there. More main hand weapon strikes. As many as I can get in and drop doggos while we can't do any main hand weapon strikes. Okay. Do wins is over, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Healer's kind of low. I think we have the DPS to kill this before we have to do anything else. I'm going to use healing potion. Time sink coming down on me. We're going to drop it over there. Thanks, finally repositioning. That's very nice. It's really coming down on us over here. We have Doom Winds available, and we're going to try and get some Storm Strike resets. Wing Buffet, I can use my defensive step forward so I don't get knocked back as far. Group Heal might be available soon. I'm going to try and move away. I'll drop it in here. Trying to move away from that. Sand Blast. I think I might have Rewind Times coming in. That's perfect. We're going to drop a Wind Fury Totem before it starts so I can focus all my globals on that. On the damage, rather than on buffs we did manage to get a battle res in it finally came off cooldown so we got the uh, warrior back up i think the warrior just got very unlucky there's a wing buffet coming through i have group heal for the next one i don't think i need it here we're going to drop the time sink back there tank's moving quite a bit that's nice to see because it's going to give us a lot more room to work with because i feel like we have it three minutes to finish this as long as we don't mess up big time we should be good Gonna hold Doomwins until the next rewind time. I think I feel like it's coming anytime soon. I'm gonna use the group heal now. Time sync on me. I'm gonna move over here and then run. Surely we're going to get a rewind time soon. There it is. Beautiful. We're gonna drop doggos and then Doomwins into Sundering into Storm Strike spam. We're gonna do quite a bit of damage this round, I think. Trying to stand in the haste zones. Beautiful. I feel like I did well there. Wing buffet coming through. I'm gonna use a defensive. Trying to help the healer out time sync we're gonna drop that thing off to the side time sync does a lot of damage over time that's why i keep dropping it off i'm prioritizing it because if i die i can't do damage so getting a global of damp oh that sand breath is so scary okay boss should be dead finally keystone hero uldamon holy crap what the hell and i get the boulder splitter does anyone want that i don't really need that anyone let's see if they want to do the vp21 that are uh, party party leader just got nobody's saying anything so i'm gonna say no nine rating for getting the timed versus the untimed nine rating that's a cool key level right there almost pretty massive and that's pretty much it for this video me and my little dream surge friends would like to thank you for watching and we'd also like to ask you to like the video if you enjoyed it and also drop a comment letting me know what you liked about it i would really like to know if you guys enjoyed the narration part of the video i'm referring to the part of the video where i'm showing the dungeons other than the fully commentated dungeons i felt like that was the best way to show off what i did without having to show the full commentary because sometimes i feel like if i just cut a part of it and show you part of the live commentary. I'll make references to the other parts of the dungeons that I did live commentate, but didn't make it into the video. And then it's really hard to edit that. So I feel like with narration, I'm able to show what happened in the dungeon without losing out on any of the context of what happened in the dungeon. So yeah, let me know what you think about it. If enough people dislike it, I will stop. But right now I feel like it's a really good format. Also, don't worry, live commentary is not going anywhere. There will always be full runs with live commentary in them. I personally enjoy those and I know that you guys like those. So 
they're not going anywhere. Also a reminder, there's a poll going on right now where you can choose which class I play as a healer in season three in the next series. Right now, Mist Weaver is looking like the winner. So if you don't like that, go vote. If you want to make sure that's the case, go vote. It should be the top link in the description. Also, if you keep watching videos on the channel, even though you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it costs you nothing. But if you're feeling particularly generous, you can also become a channel member. This will guarantee a reply to your comment if you leave one. But considering I reply to most people either way, it's more so just a thing where you can show your support for the channel and I would greatly appreciate that. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. I'm just hanging with my little buddies. I just wish they were blue so I could match them with my transmog a bit better.